Hello, welcome back to Fragmental. Thanks for joining me. There have been some great fragrances released recently. Some I've talked about, some I haven't. In this video, I'm going to tell you about some fragrances that have been released over the last few months that I am absolutely loving. And the last one, you will 1 million percent neither expect nor believe. Stay tuned. fragrance at the top of this list is from a brand and a particular line within that brand that I would never have thought would wow me like it has done. Can't wait to tell you about it but we'll work up to that because first we've got a few other bangers to get through. Starting with a brilliant release from Boss. This is one of their three elixirs. Yes, three. This is the scent elixir. The official notes in this one are red pepper, lavender and sandalwood, but I also get some warming sweet spices and possibly a cheeky little bit of leather. I'm going to minute, just a few things stuck to this bottle. Those are all the compliments that this fragrance has attracted because yes, it is definitely a compliment magnet. It's strong, it's sweet, it's assertive and what I'm really loving about some of the recent releases from Boss is this isn't just a lazy, mass appealing designer release. There's actually been some thought. I feel that this is a really well constructed scent. The warm, sexy spiciness seems to be coming from cinnamon. So reminds me a little bit of Azaro's Wanted by Night. It's definitely in the same genre. It's a good, fun fragrance, but it's also got a little bit of sophistication for it. You could wear it in the same scenarios as that scent. You could wear it casually. You could wear it as a date night scent, but it would kill it in a club or a bar situation where you want a relatively loud fragrance that people are going to notice and people are going to love. What separates this though from Wanted by Night, and I love it, is there is a little wisp of smoke running through this fragrance. Looking at the note breakdown that's released, I know it's fairly minimal, but there doesn't seem to be anything in there that indicates where this little sweet woody smokiness is coming from, but I get that. The first time I wore it, I thought, was I wearing it over a smoky scent that I'd previously been wearing on the same jacket or the same clothes? I don't think it was because I've worn this now multiple times and each time I get a nice little bit of leather, a little bit of sweet smokiness. You get the sweet spices which give it its mass appeal. So it's going to be loved by people who smell this on you, but it's also got a really satisfying depth for the wearer. I am loving this because it ticks all the boxes. It's a crowd pleaser. It's got great performance. It's got a nice little bit of complexity to it. Very impressed. Generally, I love Jean-Paul Gaultier, but I do find they can be a little hit and miss with their releases. The recent Lamal Lover was a miss for me, unfortunately, but this one was definitely a hit. This is Le Beau Paradise Garden. Powdery, fresh, tropical vibes, mint, coconut, fig, with a great contrasting saltiness. Imagine this. You've been swimming in a gorgeous, clear, blue, tropical ocean. You step out onto the white, sandy beach, and you head over to the bar in the five-star resort you're staying in and you grab a refreshing fruity cocktail. A little bit of fig in there as well and you've got the sea salt gently cooking on your sun-soaked skin. You're in paradise and there's a garden. My favourite of the Lebeaux, I think it's the most well-balanced and well-constructed. This could be the summer fragrance of 2024. Dolce & Gabbana, let's see what you got. Speaking of summer, this was the scent of last summer for me, Gucci Guilty Elixir. Great release from Gucci with its powdery white florals, very much in the vein of Amouage's Reflection Man. I bought this at the airport on the way out to Spain. I wore it every day for a week. So now whenever I wear this fragrance, it reminds me of lazy, boozy tapas lunches, great friends, great nights out, a few hangovers. This was the scent of my summer hangovers. If you've never created a holiday scent memory before, I can highly recommend doing it. It's almost better than having photos or videos of that holiday. A great way to do it is how I did purchase it from Duty Free at the airport on the way out. Make sure it's a fragrance that you're not familiar with, that you don't have any other associations with, and then hammer it wear the crap out of it all through that holiday every day and it will forever whenever you spray it whenever you wear it it will transport you back to that place and time love the bottle love the juice love the memories that come flooding back there have been some decent releases from Givenchy over the last few years and this is up there with their best it is the newly released gentleman society extreme minty freshness refreshing yet complex iced coffee iris and vetiver. I've got a thing about fragrances that are called intense or extreme 
not actually being very intense or extreme and worse than that, being less intense and less extreme than the previous version. Well, I can tell you that gentlemen, society extreme is actually quite extreme in comparison to last year's society release, which I enjoyed, but it never wowed me enough to buy it. I have a sample, so I have been testing these side by side. When I smelled this one, it did wow me enough to buy it because it does take it into more extreme territory. It's still got that iris vetiver combo, but everything's dialed up. The peppermint and the coffee actually work really well together. It makes it pop off the skin in the opening. It's got a much more distinctive and stronger opening than the original Society. It pushes that beautiful iris even more. It does everything that an extreme fragrance should do with a few added flourishes. It's got more power, it's got more depth, it's got more personality. I am absolutely loving this. I absolutely love Reserve Privé. That is a great fragrance, but I am absolutely loving this just as much. Maybe they should have called it Society Absolute. Niche for All is a great way to get affordable, niche quality fragrances in your life. And this one is one I'm definitely glad is in my life. Vanilla Rum. The name alone I know will be exciting many of you, but you'll be even more excited to learn that it also has cinnamon, tobacco, and creamy sandalwood. You might think that this has a very similar note breakdown to Initio's side effect, and it does smell pretty much the same, but that is where the similarities end because the bottle and the name bear no resemblance at all to Initio's side effect. Obviously, I'm going nuts for this fragrance. It is right up my alley. I've always wanted to own side effect, but I don't need to anymore because I am loving this just as much. I'm also loving 84 quid for 100 mil or 50 quid for 30 mil. If like me, you love boozy vanilla tobacco fragrances, if you love side effect, but you don't want to break the bank, you all might want to get your nose on this from Niche for y'all. Now, I've already talked about Boss The Scent Elixir. I'm also partial to Boss Bottled Elixir. Surely, Boss can't make it three for three on the elixirs. Oh yes, they can. Boss Bottled Triumph Elixir. So, Boss are calling this a sportive fragrance. I'm assuming they mean it is a sports style fragrance. Not sure I'd call it that, but who cares what they call it? It's damn good. I guess I'd expect a sports fragrance or sportive fragrance to be more invigorating, bursting with some explosive freshness, perhaps some mint and citruses. I did actually wear this in the gym today and it seemed to work really well, but it's not a fresh, sporty fragrance in my opinion. The other thing that is also a little misleading, I think in Boss's blurb, describing this release, they mention something aquatic in there and the bottle does have a blue tinge to it. It's like a really dark navy blue. So you would think maybe this is their aquatic version of Boss Bottled Elixir. Nope, not aquatic in the slightest. What you get with Triumph Elixir is a massive patchouli bomb. And this is not a hard patchouli to like at all. It's not abrasive. It's not too dirty or earthy. It is a very well-rounded, very pleasant, chocolatey type patchouli. Same perfumers as Bottled Elixir, so it makes sense that it has the same kind of niche vibe. And honestly, if I was to pick this fragrance out of a blind test and have to choose whether it was designer or niche, I'd probably go niche, just as I would Bottled Elixir. Triumph isn't as complex though. It's more mass appealing and more versatile than the original Bottled Elixir. It actually reminds me of a vintage powerhouse fragrance, you know, ones that had massive doses of patchouli. So because of that, it has tons of gravitas, which will really empower the wearer. Another elixir triumph for Boss, of course, the term elixir doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't refer to concentration, not even a style or genre. It's nothing more than a marketing label. But if that label means that Boss are gonna keep putting out high quality, creative, boundary pushing fragrances, I'm in. When's the next elixir? Talk about designer brands pushing the boundaries. This is one that pushes so hard, it took me by surprise. From Paco Rabanne in their one million line, this is Golden Oud. We've got saffron, black pepper, leather oud, and labdanum. Not only does this smell niche, but this is seriously giving Amouage a run for their money. It smells very Middle Eastern, and I think that is the intention from Paco Rabanne, judging by the writing on the bottle. The oud in here, is not off-putting in the slightest. It's not a clean medicinal type of oud, nor is it a funky fecal number. It's like a version of oud that packs all the power and the profile of a pongy oud, but somehow without the pong. 
I don't know for sure, but my guess is that the Oud is some sort of lab created molecule designed to take on the characteristics of natural Oud, minus some of the more divisive characteristics. What you get is this sort of more mass appealing style of Oud, and I guess that makes sense. It is Paco Rabanne after all. And even though it smooths off some of the rougher edges of natural Oud, it still is a nuclear powerhouse of a fragrance. Layer that Oudy Middle Eastern profile over the top of the very sweet, appealing 1 million DNA, and you have this perfect hybrid of mass appealing yet niche style fragrance that has massive performance and is highly likely to pull in a ton of compliments. Never expected Paco Rabanne to pull off something as audacious as this, but they did, and I'm very glad that they did. Look at all these designer brands getting creative and pushing boundaries. Could we be on the cusp of a new golden age of designer perfumery? There's a selection of the fragrances that I'm loving. What do you think of the fragrances I've mentioned? Are you also loving them? And what other recent releases that I've not mentioned are you absolutely loving? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, if you found it useful, please give it a like. It really helps. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do all that, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.